Thanks, Amy. Lovely. Cheers, bye. Adult trauma call, eight minutes. Adult trauma call, eight minutes. I've got an unconscious gentleman. He has severe traumatic brain injury. King's College Hospital, London. Make something hurt. One of the busiest A&E departments in the country. They're a bit busy right now. Yeah, you be 50 minutes, 30 yeah. minutes. King's is extreme, isn't it? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> a place where love, life and death... <laughs> unfold every single day. Fall from a tree is probably absolutely trolleyed. I'm very drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I just keep thinking I'm not going to cope. All the patients you're about to see were treated in one department <gasps> in just one 24-hour period. Camino. Everyone should walk through an emergency room at least once in their life because it makes you realise what your priorities are. It's not the rush, rush, rush and the money, money, money. It's the people you love and the fact that one minute they might be there and one minute they might be gone. Morning, Every day, 60,000 people in the UK visit A and E. No, this one was stretched out. Right. Terribly wrong. I'll try my best to sort of just bring it together and close it up. 350 of them are treated here at King's. You'd think they'd see me pretty quick, wouldn't you? Because obviously every time I move my eye, it's just scratching a little bit more. It's more like it's not painful, it's more like irritating. You yeah, there like you are. So we have a port of this in near our city, thank you. Up to 140 staff work 24 hours a day. They're prepared for anything. Just to test whether the battery was working. And, so, and the gun was loaded? Yes. And you didn't realise that the gun was loaded? Yeah, there you go. People coming in with their coughs, colds, a cut on their end of their finger, to the extreme of people being thrown out of cars in the ambulance bay um, who've been shot. Man with my own hands. Hands to gone. Ooh! <laughs> right, feels old. It's not a fetish having injured people coming through the door. Well, for whatever reason, you still get a buzz from hearing the words gunshot wounds. <laughs> it just sounds sexy. Just take some deep breaths for me. Say 99 for me. 99. And again. 45. <laughs> and again. 99. <laughs> All those people that have chopped off limbs, digits, people that have fallen over and dislocated their shoulders, I salute you. Thank you so much for making my job enjoyable. Have you got glass in there? Probably. That's, that's coming through a lot more. I wasn't there that a minute ago. I thought, oh, my God, my God, my son's going to lose his hand or he's going to bleed to death or... Things you've put me through. God, he put, what he put me through earlier with the police and then this. I mean, what are you trying to do? Right, well, the police things kind of died out. Yeah, no, I know. But... You know when my five months are done, my record's clean again. It gets wiped off. The yacht people told me that. You've got lovely ears. I do. Hasn't he? He has. He's got really nice ears. No, he's got really... You've got real... That me, That's yeah? you. That's Come about on. time. 19-year-old Alex Ford is being seen in minors, where non-life-threatening injuries are treated. My name's Kim. I'm one of the emergency nurse practitioners. So, what happened today? I just got a bit angry and put my hand through a double blade. Mm. I'll just stand over here, mind my own beeswax. Oh, well, good one. Special. Oh, no, I can look at it. That we're going to have to stitch. Yeah. Tess. Do you like oh. that one, Mum? No. That one was Hollywood for you, yeah? 
Do you know what it looks like, Mum? Do you know when the zombie bites yeah, into your hand? Yeah, it's all right, yeah. Oh, God. What I'm going to do, I'm going to send you round to X-ray. Yeah. We'll have a look, see if there's any glass in it, and that one up here is going to be stitched. Yeah. It felt quite good, actually. That sounds bad, but when I did it, it was like an achievement. Like, I've just broke a window, yes, with my hand. It's double glazing, wow. I think I might be uh, stuck in the suture room for about two weeks trying to sew this bloke's hand up. Nice, great big laceration on the hypothena, on the theno eminence, right down here. Lovely. So what you get when you lose your temper at 17 and put your hand through a glass door. Yep, right. They think that we can just put them back together brand new and that they're invincible. I'll be doing that too often, I hope. That we've got spare parts in the drawer. Um, and we just, you know, a bit like Meccano set. I was going to stay, I was, I was just going to stay at home in bed with the curtains drawn and just sleep it off. But obviously, I ain't going to sleep off a bit of metal stuck in my eye, am I? Could Dr. Robbie contact him on 2405? I know my eye hurts, but do you get feeling in your eye? Has it got nerves, like your, like your fingers? No, I don't think it has. <coughs> like... <coughs> like there, do you know what I mean? It's not really... You can feel it, but not really... No, but when they pop your eye out and it's hanging down, yeah? Shut up. That's what they do, do, seriously. Yeah, yeah. It makes your legs go like that, straight away, like that. That's why they put you in a chair, you're clamped in, they pop it out with, like, a silver spoon for you, <laughs> and it's hanging here on a bit of tissue, yeah? Like that. And then they uh, fiddle with it and do whatever they need to. Yes, they do. Not my eye, they're not. Well, what do you say? So when they take your eye out, what is behind it? Yeah. What's behind your eye? It's a lot of nerve things, isn't it? I don't know, free tendons, isn't it? Yeah, but what's it, what's, what is that bit there? What is behind it? Is it like skin? No, it's just hard, isn't it? It's like flesh. When they pop that out... Disgusting, man. Yeah. <gasps> what have you done? Click the wrong patient off. Yeah. Yeah, the patient I'm about to see. And it's me. Guess what I've done? I've just discharged a patient I've not seen yet. Yeah, it will, won't it? Thanks a lot. Bye. Ah, you see, this is what happens when you make me get up in the morning to come to work. What do you want to be? What do I want to be? A legend. No, what do you want to That's be? That's it. I just, want, I just want to be remembered. Is that a problem? You're not listening. It's the easiest... It's a job. Without no one really, like, I want to be remembered, like... No. Yeah, but I want to be remembered, like... I don't want to be a nobody. I want to be a somebody. Like Achilles. My little baby. My little baby. My mummy's baby. Mm -hmm. Don't grow up. I have to. Don't grow up. Be mummy's baby forever. <laughs> Sorry, Mum. Oh, that's all right. I He's got to calm down. My little, my little boy's growing up too fast. Did your mum and dad? Do you know what you can get me for Christmas? Do you know what you can get me for Christmas? A punching bag. Because you know that'll be the best thing for me when I get angry. Just go and work it out. Cause I was going to get you something really nice for Christmas. <sighs> what a punching bag will do? Anyone. Just tell anyone in the family, get Alex a little small punching bag. He's always had what he wanted, this one. I have, I'll give them that. If he wanted a flat screen telly, he got one. If Think he about wanted, it back in the day. A console, he got it. Okay. Um, I'm going to give it a good irrigation, a good clean out. We have to develop relationships very quickly because we're about to do some horrible things to you. We're about to hurt you, basically, and it's legal. Yeah. He puts his hand through a glass window, then he needs somebody to hold his hand while he has an injection. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, darling. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I've just got a vision of Drogba scoring against Arsenal for some reason, and that really hurts. You're doing well. You've certainly done a good job on this, Alex. I know. I will not... I probably won't ever hit anything ever again. 
It might be a good idea, actually. I'm just going to be some peacemaker now. Yeah. I'm going to go around the streets of Brixton preaching. Ah! Sorry. It's very, very deep. This may be a bit too much for us to do. We may have to send you... I didn't even hit it that hard. I swear to God, I didn't. Well, sometimes you don't. It's just the way you hit it, isn't it? Uh, it was the yeah. angle, yeah. Yeah, it was definitely. It's like I did a martial arts move. Sorry, Alex. I'm sorry, 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 sorry. I know that I'm hurting them, but I need to do it, and I'm always saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, and, and I'm sure they don't believe me, and they're probably right not to. Oh, I can remember being 17, 18, and thinking that I could do absolutely anything and nothing would happen to me. You know, that's just being a kid. Right, we're going to have to hand you over to the orthopaedic doctors. Oh, I used to take risks, do stupid things, like walk the other side of bridges and just ridiculous, ridiculous behaviour. <laughs> Drive my car really fast, I had my mini up on two wheels, round and round about. Oh, fucking crazy. I'm such a moron. Oh. I won't be smashing anything ever again, though, because any time I get angry, and I, I just look at it and, yeah. There's been times since where I've got angry, and you know what the reminder is? I can't even clench my fist. That's the reminder. Like, I can't even... It just... It hurts doing that, so I just... Yeah. And I know the reason is that, the reason why I can't clench my fist is because I got angry in the first place, so, yeah. Phone. Yeah. A direct line from the ambulance service to the emergency department. Mm. When it rings, it signals the imminent arrival of a seriously ill patient. Okay. All right, thank you. Oh. oh, how many minutes did they say? It's about five or six minutes. <laughs> Adult red phone in five minutes. <laughs> the 100 patients brought here by ambulance each day. On average, 10 of them are victims of road accidents. Brendan is 31 years old and a motorcyclist. Um, he's ridden head-on into a motorcar. Um, he's pulled out the windscreen and um, has gone into the tank of his motorcycle complaining of groin pain. Uh, his injuries seem to be isolated to bilateral fractures of the wrists uh, and he has an injury to his right testicle. His scrotum is uh, discoloured. He complains more pain in the right testicle than the left testicle. Nothing else for they're in a completely alien environment. One minute they're riding their motorbike or something, the next minute there they are strapped down to a bed, lying stark naked with about eight people around them with some strange man putting their finger up their bottom. Um... <laughs> Brendan, um, we need to put a drip in, but because you've broken both your wrists, or you might have, I'm going to put one in your ankle, so it's going to be quite uncomfortable, OK, just to let you know. OK. All right. No, I'm just holding his ankle for a minute. Really hurt. Sorry. You know, and they're in pain and they've got no idea what's happening. All they can see is the ceiling. You know, they've got no idea what's going on and it must be petrifying. I'm from the waterworks side. Oh, okay. Down below. The important yes. thing, all right. Don't mind all this other stuff. It'll fix, yeah. Right. Um, yeah. The, the consultant has told me that you have an injury down below. How does it feel? Uh, it just felt like I've been heavily booted in the in the nuts. I think so. It's just uh, the right testicle was 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 uh, giving me a bit. Have you ever had any problems with your testicles before? No. Not from one of the <laughs> Thanks a lot, mate. No, you're wrong.
it looked like a purple carrot, I can tell you that much. I thought it was touch and go at, at one stage, because uh, a couple of days when I, when I was on the ward, going to the toilet thinking, lifeless. There's not a lot going on down there, and not even the nurses can help me out in that respect, and it's lifeless. I'm like, OK, well, hopefully, hopefully when I get back home, you know, might see some signs of improvement. But it was blue, black and blue for a couple of weeks. Food trolley. I do have. Alice has brought her sister Pat into A&E after a fall on a shopping trip. Cheese and pickle, there, egg and cress, savoury cheese. Savoury cheese is quite nice. Give it a try. You want to give it a try? Yes, and uh, you're entitled to have a drink and a crisp with it for £3.49. That's a meal deal. He had them on that trolley. Did they say? Yeah, he did. He well, said, yeah, he said sandwiches. When I see biscuits, I never say it. No, sandwich. the sandwiches, I think, were on the top. He well, did I say sandwiches. Yeah, he did say it. Good trolley. But you don't know when they were made. They could have been last week's. I was looking forward to me fish and chips. But oh, there you yeah. go. I didn't know what tribes they were going to have a sandwich. It's one o'clock, I mean. I don't know, I ain't got a watch. Down, down. Well, yeah. Is uh, quarter past one, nearly quarter past one? Ten past one. Thank you. Mm. Mind just then, he said, would you want to have it? It's too much. You went, you wouldn't live to spend it. She went, if so, I want a million there, that would seem me for Yeah, but they've both got families, don't they, that they can leave it to? Yeah. That's a good part. Yeah, and they could go, they could leave. go fast just like that. Why should that leave it to them? I mean, look at Gordon Ramsay, he's gone skint nearly, he's relied on Peter Jones. He's only going to Peter Jones. Yeah, that's what I say, with all his money. All so his you money. can go fast. I wouldn't stick with him. I mean, this horrible man, he's been all the time. Every word is there. You're right. Can I come Can in with that? Bag for me. Yep. What you got in here? Bomb? Dr. Aisha, oh, come to me, just please. Can Dr. Aisha come to me, just? Um, have you been a smoker in the past? Yes, I've been doing yesterday. I've been doing yesterday, okay. Have you been smoking for a long time? Oh, I wouldn't say really that long. Late 70s. Okay, and how many a day? Well, John gives down to 20. It drives me nuts that people don't look after their health. There's only so much that we can do as doctors. We're not magicians. Do you smoke quite a lot then? Breathe in and out through your mouth for me. That's it. Can you do it again? Good, and keep going. Sonic, I wanted brain training, but Leanne took it out and I can't find it. This is the 35th time Lynn Brackley's been to hospital this year. Shit. Today, she's been brought in by her son, Lee, after collapsing with stomach pains. Do you want a drink? Linda Blackley. Blackley. Hi. How, how are you feeling? Are you in a lot of pain? Do you need something for the pain? Mm -hmm. okay. I've been asking for ages. Sure. Can you tell me a bit about the pain? I'll assess your pain and I'll write something. I was in five weeks ago. Right. Yeah. Um, Mr Patel took out my gallbladder. 
Right. I'll be truthful with you. I've had enough mm. of being in pain. Right. Do you know what I mean? Um, I've had enough. Okay. I'm sorry about that, but we'll try and do something for you today. Thank you. Okay. And how are you coping at home? I'm not. At the weekend, the pain was that bad that I really felt like doing something stupid. I did because I've had... Like what? Yeah. I haven't got to say, have I? Yeah. I haven't got to say it. It's yeah. just... No, I just want to know... Ex what, how I'm feeling? No, no, no. If you thought of something... I yeah, I did, I did think... I, yeah, I did. Mm. Yeah, I did, because I've mm. had enough. Right. Okay. Do you know what I mean? I thought that once the gallbladder come out after having the gastric bypass, my life would be different, but it isn't. It is because I've lost the weight, but it just seems to have opened up a can of worms and I'm not dealing with the situation that, that good at the moment. Have you had this thought before or this is the first time you've had no, it? No, I've had it, I've had it before. Hmm. I have had it before. And have, have you ever sort of... Yes, I have done it before. What have you done? I have took an overdose before. Okay. Just remind me why you had the bypass again? Why? Because I was fat. Okay. That's fine. And I couldn't lose. How fat yeah. were you? I was 29 stone. Okay. And now? I am 15 stone 13. So you're getting more and more thoughts of uh, harming yourself recently, is that right? Yeah, because of the pain. Oh, okay. When you're fat, everything gets put down to your size. Mm. Yeah? and people don't actually look into the situation. It's, oh, there's nothing wrong with you. It's your size that's causing the problem. Mm -hmm. Like, big people have rights as well, you know? Yeah, yeah, sure, they sure they do. You know, but because, because you're big, they just discard that. Mm. Okay. But they can't do that no more because I'm not, I'm still big, yeah? Mm. But I'm not as big as what I was. Yeah. So they can't do that to me no more. Sure. So I'm not gonna take, I'm not gonna take that. Okay, fine, I'm just telling you, just tell me if it hurts a lot, I'll be gentle. That people have rights as well. We have feelings, just as much as skinny people or anything else. Do you know what I mean? If anything, fat people might have more feelings than skinny people, to be quite honest with you, because I think that fat people are more loving. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put an injection in your wrist here. That's going to numb it, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to pull it, and we're going to put a plaster on. Right. So I'll get Perfect one of my colleagues. Plaster. It come, goes from here to here. Oh, right. X-rays show that 78-year-old Pat has broken her arm. Nance, do you want somebody to help me pull? Would you mind getting the plaster trolley for me? I will. If you're going to be my glamorous assistant. I have to batter her up. Take that last time, please. One of these days, this is going to fall apart. I can see it's going to be on me. I think she's all herself. Yeah, she's not bothered. Talking about me again? No, darling. No. <laughs> right. I'm trying to tell us some good news. Hang on. Tiger Woods. Yeah. Oh. Um, Here's another one, pay too much. She likes Johnny Depp. <gasps> I love Johnny Depp. Oh, I've got a photo of him just above my oven. So oh. I'm oh. When I'm Tell talking. me the oven. I have. No, it's on me time. <laughs> he is so absolutely I'm gorgeous. Him, I've got so to tell when I'm cooking, I've got a full eye view of him there. Oh, you're going to get burnt one oh, day. I don't <laughs> really don't care. You're going to get all splash come up. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> she go through torture. She just <laughs> oh, dear. What are you got to do? When I'm I'd doing let, this, you got to think of Johnny Depp. I'd let him pull it without doing the needle. Oh, <laughs> love him. He is gorgeous, isn't he? How come I'm doing this, by the way? Because you're my glamorous assistant. Go on with it. It's oh, going up my nose and everywhere. Think oh, of yourself know. as Angelina Jolie. That's right. <laughs> oh, she's now a Angelina. <laughs> no, no, so no. My pal, gone off Angelina. No, since she stole bread from Jennifer. Oh, 
Would you like a cup of tea? Oh, lovely. Could you? I don't have any sandwiches in here. Oh, I was going to get your sandwich, wasn't I? I will get your sandwich as soon as I've done this, oh, I promise you. I will get your sandwich. Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. once yeah. we've done yeah. this. He's doing about 20 30, the cars are about 20 30, and we each other head on pretty much. So oh, okay. I think he's just quite lucky that he's been thrown from the bike. And when he's thrown, he's just sort of thrown and landed. He's been thrown. Yeah, and it's, it's probably the best thing though, if he hadn't done that, he would just impact with the car and he had a lot worse injuries. It's three hours since Brendan Fox was first admitted. It's clear his injuries are non life threatening. Does your job make you more aware of your own mortality and think about your own death and those that you love? I think there's days where it does. There's, there's definitely days where it does. Yeah. I could be, I could be brown red, so it don't really matter. About two broken wrists, it's, and that will, that will heal. Mm. Uh, no, all in. Thank the lucky stars. Because mm. yeah. had something been coming down the bus lane, I guess. <laughs> Could have been interesting. Now that I'm married and I've got a baby on the way, I'm even more aware of it. And I'm even more aware of, actually, I might, I might be dead in 10 years, let alone 40 years. Very scary, was it? No, but I just think it's somebody trying to tell me something that uh, there's only so many lives you've got. How many have you used that? <laughs> well, today, I reckon I've used a bloody good chunk of them because, uh, you know, quite easily have been dead, so. It wasn't my time. It wasn't my time. So. Every day when you go out on the bike, there's always a nearly, you nearly got me, got away with that one. Uh, and eventually you, your luck runs out, you know. The odds, the odds are at some point you're gonna get it, but how you escape or how you get away with it is, uh, it's all down to luck at the end of the day. Thank you very much, everybody, for your help. You've been out. Come on, you've got rid of me. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, thanks. <laughs> King's only. Hello. Two minutes. Cheers, bye. Red phone, two minutes. Red phone, two minutes. Hello, Kings. Adult trauma, red phone, three minutes. This is Claude. Called us a day with a bit of difficulty in breathing. I love recess. It can be a bit stressful if we've got more than the five patients in there, because we've only got five trolleys. Okay, how long? But head injury. But it's it's a buzz. The adrenaline's amazing. This is Alan. He's 50 years of age. Fell down about seven carpet stairs onto a carpet floor. I've never ever had a problem with the sight of blood. The crunch of bones when I'm putting fractures back to place. I think that's great. Even seeing someone's chest being opened in recess. It's not ideal, but it doesn't phase me. Great for me personally, not for them. 
No, he can go. He can. Oh. He can sit yeah, here. That's what I was thinking. This one's gonna go to extra. That he can move there and then. Yeah. Yeah. If we get another tram in the next 20 minutes, I'll be upset. Absolute carnage. Right, how many red phones is this now? Because this is nearly getting close to my 15 in a bloody shift. 15, you reckon? Yeah. I only did 11 the other day. 56-year-old Michael Brown crashed his van on the way home from work. Chest on the steering wheel. Um, he's got Parkinson's, which okay. left side tremor is normal for him. Yeah. He says this is quite bad, it gets bad when he's stressed, which obviously. He's stressed. He's calmed down quite a lot, but it's just got bad again. Okay. Michael, have you got any pain on your legs? Can you lift this leg up for me? Lift it up all the way. Cool. And this one? Lovely. Michael. My name's Ferris. I'm one of the a &E consultants here. Mm -hmm. okay. How are you doing? Oh, I'm all right. Yeah. You seem quite anxious. Uh, it's just mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. I know, I know. It's very easy for me to say try and relax, OK? Um, but do try and relax as much as you can. Yeah. I'm not worried about you, let me put it that way, no, OK? Right. Just because of what's happened and what symptoms you've got, I think we just not to, need to be a little bit more cautious. Yeah. But I'm hoping that we'll get you up and out by this evening's end. Okay. okay. That's good. Thank you. Well, I just thought I could have lost them. Could have been a lot different. That was basically the main thing that went through my head, you know? I could have lost them, and he could have been a lot more seriously hurt. He's always been the strong one. He's always been there for me. It was just horrendous to see him like that. And I hope I never see him like that again. Hiya. Look at him, is he crying? So why are you upsetting him, huh? Huh? Look at him, he's smiling. Please don't upset him. He's been doing fine. He was so brave until you guys came along. <laughs> I'm not worried about him. It looks scary and freaky. OK, if I was worried, I would tell you. What we're going to do, we're going to x-ray there, we're going to x-ray there and there and down there. If those x-rays are fine, we can give them back to you. Well, good. Is that a deal? Yeah. <laughs> OK. Eighty-one-year-old George Rumsey lives with his great nephew Jay. Oh, Things a little bit, isn't it? That's the oldest one I've ever in. George has been brought to A and E with breathing difficulties. Okay, that's all done, sir. I'm going home now. Oh, yeah, we are. Thanks. Thanks for coming up here. Oh, that's all right. Don't let yourself get into a situation like that again. You know. You need to breathe to live, all right? Well, it's better before. I've been up here like this. All right, they sort you out. Yeah, we'll sort it into the crowd. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Anya. All right. Bye-bye. 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 B
twelve. Five to twelve, yeah. Well, he treated me as his own son and always looked after me. We just used to go to banger racing and go down to the donkey man and just used to go on the donkeys and stroke them and things like that. Well, if anything, if you're here overnight, I'll bring something cut for you tomorrow. Whenever I needed someone to talk to, he was always there and I could go into him any time, really, night or day. King Zaini. OK. Thank you. Eighty-year-old cardiac arrest. No, they port to recess with a striker trolley, and can I have an A and E doctor to recess immediately? Thank you. Two, please. Number two. An elderly man has suffered a heart attack. Let's just get some paddles on and see what we've got, okay? Most patients who have a cardiac arrest away from hospital don't survive. Anyone fell for a pulse? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Present. Pulse is present, yeah. Okay. We got a pulse. Can you move Yeah, we've got a sinus rhythm. I think we've lost rhythm. Yeah. I'm going to start CPR again. If I ever get to the age of 85 and have a cardiac arrest, I do not want to be dragged to an emergency department with people pouncing on my chest, people putting tubes down my throat. Right, OK. Somebody else do a pulse check, cos I'm not going to be reliable. What's the point? If a person dies in that circumstance, it's not dignified. I just want to die at home in peace. After several attempts to resuscitate the patient, he is pronounced dead. When you get older, maybe you do spend a lot of time contemplating things and thinking about what has happened and maybe you could have done something better. I don't know. I don't know. I've never asked anybody. Maybe it will make me, I don't know, a bit too emotional. Maybe I don't want to know those answers. Feeling better? Yeah. Basically, they just kept him in. And then the next day I come up to see him, and he seemed fine. So uh, I get a phone call the following morning saying he's had two heart attacks. And then uh, they've had to shock him twice. So I've come up here. I can't remember if it was that night or the day after he passed away. He had another heart attack and passed away. It just probably was his time. You've got to remember who to be nice to. 
you've got to still care about the people that actually deserve it. Like well. that little old man they last just, night. Just... Ah. Oh, little wait, you know, and Roger had fallen down his stairs and he had like multiple rib fractures, contusions, bilateral brain contusions. He yeah. pneumothorax one side, pneumothorax the other side. I mean, he was in a sorry, sorry old state and it just broke. And the vicar came oh, and did the last rites. Well, me and the anaesthetist were nearly in tears outside here. Yeah. Because he was just, you know how lovely he obviously was, and yeah, his daughter, him. he lived with his daughter and his son in law, and they just couldn't, you know, he always kept the place tidy and did the wash down and had the, just, you know. Yeah. As soon as they die, they've gone. The person, they're just a shell. They don't look like they did. And it's, it's, it's funny because even, even if you've only known that person, been with that person for five minutes, when they're dead, they don't look what they looked like when they first came in. Right, well, let's get him kind of somewhat yeah. reasonably reasonable. I might take... Could I have a pause oh, to x-ray, please? That's what a makes your way. features in your face and everything else just goes? Die, huh? Is rolling to me? <sighs> yeah. Good lad. Good guy. I mean, I must admit, I do talk to the bodies, though, when I'm laying them out. But I think they could be watching. I'd hate for anyone to think that I was treating them horribly. Do you know what I mean? I think it's just... I don't know whether it's a... Maybe it's a getting over it mechanism, coping mechanism, maybe. I don't know, but I've always done it. I've always spoken to the bodies. Sorry, mate. Oh, that wasn't great, was it? I managed to make a mess of that side now. They can sometimes ooze from their back passage. Their, you know come out there, they can wee, and sometimes when you turn them, it can all come out of their mouth as well. It depends. Sometimes you don't have any, and sometimes you have a lot, and sometimes they moan when you turn them over, but that's just because there's a lot of air in the lungs. <laughs> they go, Ugh, like that. <laughs> the first time I heard it, I did run out of the room, but I was only 22. I was a baby. Well, you've got some suction. Let me just suck out what's come out. Don't be making a mess like that with your family, all right? Because that won't be nice, will it? That's better, isn't it? Mm. It looks much more comfortable. There we go. There we go. All right, mate. There. It does affect me, because I realise how amazing life is. I realise that I don't ever want it to, to end, and I hope to God that I end up as fit as a flea from very many years. But I don't think it... I do have a really black and white view on death. You know, people die, it's upsetting, it's horrible, but it is a fact of life. Very tempting to move, just keep it still just for a few minutes longer. I ring them a lot more during the day to check on them and that. And I do get out and cook them his breakfast <laughs> some morning. Just basically, you know, like, don't take them so much for granted, you know? It makes you think that you should take that extra time because you never know what the outcome of the day is going to be. so much and bye red phone eight minutes please yeah 
Um, 62 year old male with chest tight. Right for, for eight minutes. For last right hour. King's INA. Got some bad news for you, man. Coffee got knocked over today. We have another trauma call coming in with a stab wound. There's a guy over there with a knife sticking out of his head. Yeah. <laughs> this gentleman has just walked into reception. He's been shot in the face. Yeah, it's a Wild West tonight. <laughs> it's the stuff of movies. But we get it sometimes at work.